Hi, this is Anthony, Managing Member of Exceptional Accounting, and today we're going to talk about the bill management system in QuickBooks. And uh, The first thing I want to do is I'd like to go over briefly what types of items you should enter into the bill function. Um, I'm going to give you two examples, uh, one example of something you should and one example of something you shouldn't. So if you receive a bill in the mail from a vendor or from wherever and it requires you to manually go in and either uh, write a check or go on their website and put in your credit card info to, to pay it, um, if it requires a manual payment from you, then that is something that should go into the bill management function. Um, unless you're you you just get the bill and you already pay it that same day then maybe that shouldn't go in but um, if your goal is to defer payment to your vendors as long as possible and conserve cash uh, so what that means is you know you'll get a bill and you're gonna wait maybe a week or so two weeks or the longest you can uh, to conserve your cash then that is what should go into this bill management system in QuickBooks um, the other example of something you shouldn't put in, let's say that you have signed up with your electric company to have them debit your account every month automatically um, you know, for the amount that is owed. And you receive a bill in the mail that says, uh, you know, on this date your account's going to be debited X amount, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I would not recommend putting in those types of items in QuickBooks. Um, you can. And by all means, if you're the the kind of person that's that stays on top of things and is really gonna be watching your books very closely, then you can. Um, I found that with my clients, uh, a lot of times you just want to keeping things simple is best. So if you know that the bill is automatically going to be paid and you don't have a reason to watch it or to go in manually and pay the bill in QuickBooks, then don't do it because it's just an extra step and it's not necessary. So again, bills that need manual payment uh, with the purpose of conserving cash and deferring payments to your vendor, those type of things should go into the system. Okay, with that said and that little introduction, we're going to actually dive in and um, show some examples of what's the correct way to enter in bills, pay bills, etc. <clears throat> So on the home page right here, you'll notice right here, there is the whole system of how it works. Entering bills and paying bills. Very simple. So you just click the enter bills, and this is the screen that you see. Um, you would create a bill, and then just put in the name of the person that you are trying to pay. Um, so let's say, just do, I don't know, we'll pick a... I did Sprint, but let's pick something else. Uh, Patrick Champion, CPA. Okay, and pick the date of the bill was received. So let's say that today is December twenty, December fifteenth. Uh, the amount due. Let's say we owe him seven hundred dollars for what he's done. You can put in a reference number if you'd like. If there's a like on the specific bill, sometimes they'll have a an invoice number. So let's put, you know, let's say there's invoice number 4536. Um, if there's terms, if the bill says, okay, this needs to be paid on a certain date, you can pick one of these. Um, you can actually create a new one if that doesn't actually fit. Let's say you have net 45 or whatnot, you can go to add new and create a new one. And it, you want to put in the bill date, the bill due date. That is important. You need to calculate that out of when you would like to pay the bill. Um, well, so on that, you, I guess you could do it two, one of two ways. You can put the actual date that the bill is due, so the absolute last date. Or you can do a system where you just put in um, the date that it needs to be paid by you. So... Uh, I think that the most safe, the safest thing to do is just put the date that the bill is actually due, because it's that way it's consistent. You just look on the bill and you know when it's due, and you just watch it and pay it when uh, when it's needed. So let's say that this bill is due in a month on the, just say the fifteenth of the following month. If you want to put a memo, you can. Down here, uh, this automatically popped up 
because um, we had done this before but normally if you create a new person after you fill in the address you're gonna have to choose a account that you're gonna want to use so professional fees accounting is correct amount if you want to put in a memo you know for year-end tax returns you want to put that in um, if you would like to put in a customer so we sort of talked about this a little bit on the basic data entry uh, tutorial that I did if you so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail but it, basically in a nutshell if you incur a bill or an expense on behalf of a client that needs to be subsequently reimbursed by you you can pick the customer here so let's say we paid um, the CPA firm on behalf of one of our clients for some reason this little box clicks up and there's a check mark if you want to be reimbursed through an invoice then just click billable and when you create an invoice it will then pull in these expenses and you can be reimbursed from but for this we're gonna say that this actually didn't happen so we're just gonna get out of that um, classes if there's a class that you need to do um, we went to we went over classes in our basic data entry uh, tutorial so I'm not gonna go into that but if you need a class it's right there and click bill received and that's about it you press save and close and that's it now if you want to be able to see all the bills that are outstanding you can go to reports vendors and payable and look at your AP aging summary on this report we can see all of our outstanding bills that we have entered so right here Patrick Campion CPA is current right here 600 current means that we don't owe them any money and and whatnot so um, this is something that you want to continually look back to and monitor to see um, when you owe money and when you need to pay your vendors if you want a drill down for example here's Nolan hardware supplies you can actually drill down so take this double click it and it actually takes all of this and puts it together and you can see it and you can drill down even further by going down to the actual bill that you originally created so um, so again reports vendor AP aging summary if you want AP aging detail that's another report um, that you can go to which will show uh, which bills are current and it just kind of lists them all out in a different format that you can that you can look at um, and then of course you can mess with the dates if you want to know what bills um, at a previous date or in the future date you can do that so that is that um, the next function is how to pay your bills so if you come over here and press the pay bill button right here you can see all of your bills if you want to filter bills and say okay what bills are due on a certain date so let's say um, you know let's say uh, you know we put January 13th or actually let's do that January 26 okay um, do on or before then this vendor pops up if you just want to see all your bills and then you can manually pick which ones you want to pay just click that you can filter it by your vendor you can sort it you know by a discount date a vendor or how much needs to be paid and all the information is right here so let's say we want to pay this Patrick CPA guy um, we're gonna click him and come down here and we're gonna basically fill in all these items if there is a discount like if he gives you a discount if you pay um, sooner then you can enter that in there as a dollar discount um, you pick the payment date as of the date that you are paying pick the method a check uh, you can you can specify whether it's to be printed um, or if you're just gonna sign a check number which means that you're just gonna get your little checkbook uh, pick the next blank check and put in the check number which we'll probably do and then you pick the account that you're gonna pay it from so usually a bank account so you pick the bank account that you're actually gonna pay from okay 
And next part is you would go to pay selected bills. You're going to put in the check number from your checkbook. Press OK. And there we go. We paid that bill for $700. And if you want to see, if you go to banking, use register for the checking account. Um, it is in here somewhere. Can't be in Patrick's CPA right there. There is our check that we just wrote. So, um, one additional item to recognize and be aware of it is very important that once you start entering bills, that you are aware and you properly go in and use the pay bill function to pay your bills. If you just go, let's say you're trying to reconcile your accounts and you remember that there's this one um, that there is this one vendor that you paid, you wrote a check, but in your hurry, you just want to quickly write in the transaction that oh, you, know, you paid this to this company. Um, if you do that and don't use the proper system of you know entering the bill and then going in and paying the bill, it will still show up under the AP aging summary report as still being owed. So that's why when you start using this function, it's important that you understand that for those bills that you enter you must go and manually pay them using the proper function right here enter bill pay bill and once you do that it will create the entry for you in the register thanks for watching please check out our youtube channel for additional videos and check out exceptionalaccounting.com if you have any suggestions about additional questions or future videos, leave a comment below and we will make a video just for you. Thanks a lot and have a good day.